Hi, I'm Tim Stein and welcome to this video where I talk about the layout of the keyboard. Why is it important to, to have an idea of the layout? Well, you're playing a piece of music and you're looking at the score. Um, to exercise a degree of peripheral vision will help. Um, just to get feeling of, of where you are, distance between notes, big leaps and so on. Um, now, if you look at the piano keyboard itself, you can see quite clearly that the black notes are in groups, single black note, the left hand, then twos, threes, twos, threes, and so on. So a simple little exercise that I get my students to do is just to find the two black notes first of all. And if you just open your, rather close your hand so your fingers are together like so, I'm not worried about fingering at this stage, just play with your left hand only all the two black notes. And what I would like you to do, what I suggest is that you just are as free as possible so that you can actually use this as a warm-up exercise at the same time. Just locate the two black notes, fingers together. And then similarly, with the right hand, you could take the three black notes and just work your way down the piano, for example, threes. And so on. And then, once you've found the notes, uh, another good exercise is to locate them without looking and just feel for the black keys. So for example, let's take the two black notes. Find them first of all by looking, place your fingers over them and then just shut your eyes and imagine that you're a crab crawling sideways and your fingers are like glue sticking to the keys and we just want you to feel for the two black keys together. So first two black notes and just keep crawling up the piano until you can get to another two. And if you get lost or you can't find them, open your eyes just to check. And then similarly, you could do the same with the threes in the right hand. Three black notes and just keep crawling down until you found another three. And you develop a really good sense of where you are. You could also place left hand over right or right hand over left. So for example, two black notes in the left hand, three black notes in the right hand and just cross over right up to the top of the keyboard. And then again, you could do the same thing, coming back the other way, starting with the right. It doesn't really matter which hand you start with. And then you could do that without looking. Twos together, threes together, and so on. Another tip would be to locate individual notes. Now, if I'm teaching really small beginners, I mean, adults too, um, Find what I think is probably the easiest note on the piano, which is Doggy D. That might sound silly, but Doggy D has two black ears. So the D is the middle note between them. And just find the Ds, looking first of all. It doesn't really matter what finger. I mean, actually, I would suggest a stronger finger, so perhaps second or third finger, and just play them. Right up to the top and then back down again. And if you really want to, you can just call out D. So again, it sends a signal from the brain to the finger. And then once you've found the Ds, you could do that without looking. Now, without looking, finding one single note can actually be quite tricky. So the best thing to do is to find the two black keys first of all, and then feel for the D in between. And then as we did before, just crawl up, find another two black keys together, and you've located your D, hopefully. Then you could do the same with C's and E's. So the C sits before the D and the E sits after it. So the C sits before the two black keys and the E sits just after it. Why is it important not to look at what the fingers are doing? Well, primary importance, when you're reading a score piece of sheet music, you want to have your eyes on that piece of music. So you want to develop that sense of peripheral vision. And similarly, if you're playing a music if you're playing music rather without a score in front of you and you've got difficult jumps or big leaps, you haven't got time to look at what every hand, whatever finger is, what each finger is doing. So you're a big leap in the left hand while you've got something going on in the right hand. So these things are very important. And by practicing these exercises, which you can also develop, hopefully you should be able to overcome those difficulties. I hope that makes sense and that you enjoyed it and that um, you look forward to tuning into my next video where I talk about warm-up exercises and the importance of doing them.